The problem is we have a smoking beamer. What we have here is a car with valve stem seal problems. This is an expensive problem and today we'll show you the AGA valve stem seal repair without removing the intake or exhaust cams. Using the AGA N62 valve stem seal toolkit not only saves you hours but also eliminates having to have thousands of dollars invested in cam timing tools. This AGA valve stem tool is uh, intended for professional mechanics. It's a quite involved job and make sure you're comfortable with taking the engine apart to this extent before you start into the job. For the actual removal of the valve covers, if you're interested, there is for the TIS technical information system, it's procedure 11 12 005 for the left side and 11 12 006 for the right side. Technical information system is something that you subscribe to. However, you could try to type that into Google and see if it came up. The valve stem seal problem is that the old valve stem seal becomes hard and doesn't provide a good sealing between the seal and the stem. And as the valve is operating, this allows oil to suck through. Also, the older style seal does not have a sealing on the inside that makes a seal to the guide like the newer updated style seal has. This creates an oil pocket underneath the seal that oil can accumulate in and make the problem worse. Oil consumption here is bad for a lot of different symptoms on the N62 engine. We've seen a number of cars that have set CAT inefficiency codes. These codes can go away if you replace the seals. Also, when you do install the new seal, obviously it will eliminate the smoking, which is, if the car has gotten to that point, is really excessive oil entering into the combustion chamber and through the exhaust. Today I'll show you the procedure on how to replace the N62 valve stem seals. Here we have a 745, however the N62 engine is all the same, whether it's a 5 series, 6 series, 7 series or a X5. The procedure is all the same, just the layout of the engine bay is a little bit different. The labor time to do them will vary a little bit depending on the car, like for instance on the X5 you have a heater control valve on the driver's side of the vehicle that you just have to unbolt and move down a little bit. No need to disconnect it, have coolant or anything like that, just two bolts and push it down a little bit out of the way to gain access to remove the valve covers and to use the tool. You start with removing the left and the right side valve cover. To better show you how to do the job, we here have an engine out of the car. In order to get the valve covers off, you start with disconnecting the cam servo motors, spinning them until they disengage the gear on the inside. You then unbolt the flange that the stepper motor mounts to from the valve cover. Undo the cam position sensor switch in the back. Of course, all the screws on the valve cover and then lift it straight up not to damage the cam position sensor. This is easier said than done in the car, but take great care when you do this to come straight up. Once you have the valve cover off, you'll have the four um, spark plug tubes right here. Remove those as well. Once the cover is off, you remove the cam oil line. Remove the cam position sensor and it only goes on one way, so you don't have to worry about what position is in or anything like that. Before we get started on the job itself, let me show you really quick what tools you'll need. A leak down tester, and uh, I really prefer you leak, use a leak down tester so you don't put so much pressure into the cylinder and cause the engine to turn over by accident. It's plenty of pressure to keep the valves closed. A magnet of your choice, whatever you like. A pair of needle nose pliers. You can do it with a regular pair of needle nose pliers, no problem. If you have a pair that is like this fuel hose type, they work really good 
for getting the valve stem seals right off the guides. You'll need a 27 millimeter socket with a short extension and I prefer a long handle ratchet makes it really easy to turn over the engine on the front of the crankshaft. And a little bit of uh, white lithium grease or something similar. And a spark plug socket. Start with removing the spark plug. All of them on left and right side. And install the spark plug hole. It has a hole in the center of it where you can insert the TDC indicator that comes with the kit. They don't need to be super tight, just by hand. They have a little hole in them, so optics can't fall into the cylinder, very important, and also allows air to go in and out, so it's easy to turn over the engine while you're doing the job. Then we install the oil drain box. This is to prevent if you accidentally drop a keeper, from the keeper falling all the way down into the oil pan. Now we're going to install uh, the compression plates that sit on top of the cam tower. So uh, remove the nut right here. We already removed the bolt for the cam oil line in this position. Um, the brackets are labeled bank one, which is right side of the vehicle, F intake front. So this bracket goes on in this position right here and secures with the factory uh, nut on the one side and on the upside we insert a bolt all the way and bottom it out so that we have full thread engagement and after that run the nut down and then just slightly tighten the nuts on both sides. They don't have to be overly tight. All they're doing is holding the plate in place while we're doing the job. The plate is the same on the left and the right side or on bank one and bank two, but reversed. As you can see on this, still bank one, intake rear. However, if you flip it over, it is bank two, intake in the front, which goes on the opposite side. Now we want to bring the engine to TDC on the cylinder we're working on. Here we're going to use a 27 millimeter socket, short extension and preferably a long ratchet like this. On the 7 series it's very easy, there's a lot of room in the front and it goes right on and you can just look at the cams as you turn it over. On the 5 and the X5 in particular it's a little bit tighter but you can get it in there without a problem. I recommend to remove the ratchet after the engine is on TDC so that when you apply the air to the cylinder and should the engine turn over that you don't break anything like radiator hoses or fittings in the front with the handle of the ratchet. With the TDC indicator in the hole and the cam lobes coming up in position to where they're on the back side of the roller, turn the engine until it is a top dead center right where you can see the flag crest over. Now that the cylinder is in TDC on the cylinder we're working on, remove the flag, remove the spark plug hole insert, and insert the leak down hose so that no objects can fall into the cylinder. To make it easier for you, we have made a chart and labeled each compression lever left right and S for short. As you can see on the chart here, cylinder number one, the one we're working on right now, you'll be using a short lever on the two front valves, both intake and exhaust. This uh, is necessary to clear um, the bracing inside of the cylinder head, a right, a right, a left, and left, and so on. This is on bank one. On this sheet, we've also included the firing order of the vehicle. This way you start with cylinder number one, you go to cylinder number four, which is the next cylinder on top that center, as you can see here, on this bank. That way you don't have to switch the cam holders from left to right every time, and so on. Now, um, there is one exception 
and the cylinder number two, there is a little block on the side of the camshaft. There you have to either have the engine a little bit before TDC or after TDC in order to uh, be able to get the clearance you need to do the intake valve on this side. All the procedures that I'm about to show you is the same on all the valves, left and right side. This sheet comes with every tool, so it will be very easy for you to see when you have the full size sheet in your hands. You start with uh, inserting the compression rod and bracket right here on the cylinder we're working on. It's exactly the same on exhaust and intake, just you use a different length rod. The shorter one is for the exhaust and the longer one is for the intake. In this case, we're doing cylinder number one and this rear valve, and we're going to be using the foot extension that is right. With the compression rod inserted to the bracket, slide the fork underneath the rocker arm, like so, and on to the top of the valve spring retainer. Install the ratcheting wrench on the compression nut and the lever on top of the rod. This gives you control to move this around and hold it back. And this allows you to compress the spring by ratcheting on the compression nut. Turning the compression nut nice and easy, you see the spring compress. Now you can remove the rocker arm. I'll do it with the pliers so you can see what I'm doing. Just simply grab the rocker arm, lift it up, snap it all the ball stud and pull it out. On the bottom of the rocker arm, you can see the little retainer clips that holds it onto the ball stud. When you're in this position, you can also use this tool to replace the lifters. The lifters just slide right out like I grabbed it right now by hand. Now, reverse, flip the lever and reverse the rotation on the ratchet and allow the valve spring to extend and seat the valve. Like that. Now we're going to apply air pressure to the cylinder. As you can see on the leak down tester right here, it has built up pressure in the system and it is keeping the valves closed. Now again, switch the rotation on the wrench and this time compress the spring with air in the cylinder and the valve staying closed. Compress it far enough that the keeper is fully exposed. With a magnet, remove the valve keepers. Make sure not to drop them into the engine. Flip the lever and release the tension on the valve spring. Remove the lever and wrench and swing the assembly out of the way. Remove the valve spring and retainer. And if you have a pair of pliers like this, it makes it extremely easy to remove the valve stem seal. The new valve stem seal kit comes with a uh, little installation sleeve. This installation sleeve gets installed on top of the valve, and this is to prevent the new seal from getting nicked while going over the retainer grooves on the valve. Apply a little bit of grease to the new valve stem seal. With the sleeve installed, simply slide the new valve stem seal down over the valve and guide and push it on with the pliers. Now remove the little protector sleeve. Install the spring and install the retainer. Come back with the compression lever, slide back the foot onto the valve 
and start compression with the nut. While guiding the lever with the handle, compress the spring until the valve stem keeper grooves are fully exposed on the valve. With the valve keeper installation tool, insert the keepers into the tool, like so. Remember to have the fat side of the keeper facing up. Dab it with a little bit of grease. Insert the tool on top of the valve and push down. The keepers automatically latch into place. And now flip the rotation and lever and release the tension on the spring. Look at the keepers while you do this so they don't get pushed off accidentally. Now, release the compressed air in the cylinder and recompress the spring so you can install the rocker arm. If the spring stays, just push it down by hand one or two times. Again, you can install the rocker arm by hand, I find that easier, or you can do it with a pair of pliers. I'm using the pliers here so you can see for my hands. You can feel the rocker arm snap on to the lifter once it is on. Just make sure the rocker arm is fully seated on top of the lifter and on top of the valve. These simple steps complete the replacement of the valve stem seals. Obviously 32 valves, you got to do it 32 times, but it's as simple as I just showed you now. The same compression lever and rod is used on top for the intake. On the intake valves, in the center of the engine, you're going through the hole right here in the intake cam tower. There, you take the foot and install it on the bottom by hand like this onto the bar. In regards to the intake um, cam, there's a very slight variation. The early, early cars have a spring assist right here on the ramp. And to remove that spring, just remove this torque screw right here. And the spring can be released with a pair of pliers and pull straight up. Uh, after that, it's back to the same way as the later cars, where you can access straight down with the short foot and the compression rod right through here. The valve keeper tool is very essential to do the job fast and easy and can be bought separate for people that want to use it for other applications as well. Let me just show you how to install the keepers close up. With your finger on the bottom, push the center rod up. As you can see here, it sits in the center. Push the center rod up. Spread the keepers like this and hold them with your fingers. Load the keepers into the tool like this with the thick end of the keeper facing up, like that, release. The tension keeps the keepers in place. Now, insert it over the valve, push down, and pull up. So just a couple of quick practical tips. When doing the intake valves, it's very hard to show because it's deep inside of the cylinder head, but it has the variable lift lever on the intake that sits between the rocker arm and the camshaft. And this uh, valve installation tool is designed to work on the intake. It'll have very little clearance right here, but it will clear with only about an eighth of an inch or three millimeters and those are preferred millimeters. So when you insert the tool, it just goes underneath the pivoting arm. So here shown in close up, when you come in with the valve keeper installation tool, you come in, go right on top of the valve and rotate it in right underneath the intake lever right there. There's not a lot of clearance, but there is enough clearance to just push it on. Keepers are installed, remove the tool and then release the valve, just like we showed on the exhaust valve. So just one more time with it out of the car.
here, the lever out, it sits like this in the car. You come in with the tool, just slide it in between, dip down to install the keepers, come back up and pull out. Like I said, you don't have to take this out. If you want to, you can. It gives you a ton of room to work with, but really not necessary and it just makes the job longer. As a precaution, before installing the valve covers, when the job is completed, I recommend that you remove all the brushes, lay all the parts out on the counter, and make sure you have all pieces, including the toolkit, in front of you. That way you avoid making a mistake and leaving items inside the engine. For information and pricing on this kit, go to allgermanauto.com. There you can see the entire kit and pricing on the valve stem compression tool and the valve keeper installation tool.